Hello there everyone, UXW Bill here once again, doing the kind of thing that normal people do at a little past two o'clock in the morning, and that is to make YouTube videos. Or at least people who fall into my particular definition of uh, normal behavior. So let's see here, what's going on? I could go ahead and just tell you a good story and say that what I'm doing here is actually in the name of science to see how the DCR PJ5 Handycam reacts to low light, but that's not quite the truth. Last night, when I went over to my grandfather's house to give him a hand and help him get ready for bed, I came across the scene of people who had just sold their house and were in the process of moving out of it. They set out a crazy pile of stuff for the trash collection, and I didn't honestly think I'd ever be making a video like this again, because here in Illinois, starting at the beginning of 2000... was it 13? I think it was. We got a law here that really put a crimp in my style when it came to picking up electronics off of the curb. These people set out no less than two CRT monitors. Oh, go ahead and shed some light on the situation there. One of these uh, ubiquitous Dell 17-inch jobs. And the other one, a gateway monitor, also 17 inches in size. Check it out. Is that not a crazy amount of humidity? that you can see on those monitors, that is just absolutely unreal. But they set something else out too. A computer. Let's take a look at this thing. It's a Dell Dimension B110. And this thing was resting in a box full of other computer related stuff and uh, messed up toys and broken board games and things like that. They didn't even bother to take the power cord off of it, so... It is pretty much as found, though I don't believe either of the monitors has a power cord. Well, enough of my standing outside here rattling. I would have turned the light on out here, but let me tell you about a crazy thing that happened before I go inside. <laughs> There's a bird nest on top of the motion sensor. You might be able to see it up there. Well, yours truly had the brainy idea that he would take a broom and swat at that thing to get it down so he could trip the motion sensor, and you know what I did? Broke the light bulb. Broke it all to smithereens. Tried to pick most of it up. It's probably a very good thing that I went in the garage and checked just to make sure that the switch was off because I would imagine that could start a fire. And that's probably not a good thing to do. But I'm not taking that out of there right now. Nope, I'm going inside to finish talking about that computer and power it up so we can just see what happens to it. Okay, I made it inside. See if this is a score or a bore, or worse, a complete loss for the home team. Dimension B110, as mentioned previously. It claims to have an Intel Celeron D microprocessor inside, so not the most high-end thing you've ever heard of, but then again, I'm the kind of weirdo who has a soft spot for the Intel Celeron. Remnants of a Windows XP Certificate of Authenticity, so no idea what version of XP it's actually supposed to be running. But I would hazard a guess... whoops. I would hazard a guess it's probably Windows XP Home Edition. I'll go ahead and turn this thing over because... I wanted to see how many of its feet were still in place. This definitely has to be something of a miracle. All four of them are still here. <laughs> Got a little bit of a carpet inside there, but... I've certainly seen far worse than that. This computer hasn't been doing too badly in terms of air filtration duty. Of course, there's another theory that I'm working on. Come on. There we go. For a moment, I thought I was going to have to stop and do that with both hands. But anyway, there's a theory that I've been working on that in their secret life, when they contemplate who's going to get jury duty and things like that, a reference that I only expect a small portion of my viewers to understand, the computers are actually mammals, because how else could they grow the kind of carpets that they do? As you can see, there is the usual impressive looking carpet on the processor heatsink, also on the intake grate of the power supply. But the good news is, all of these capacitors down here look to be in excellent fighting trim. I don't see any of them with bloated tops or anything. There also doesn't seem to be any gross damage of this computer to this computer, I mean. Such is the way that the language goes right down the toilet at this hour. <laughs> this does not appear to be a Dimension 3000 motherboard, although people tell me that some B110s have surfaced with the uh, Dimension 3000 motherboard in them, and that they apparently are also 
Dimension 3000s that have this board in them, and the surest way to tell the difference is the lack of AGP slot artifacts. Also, for those with eagle eyes, the lack of any serial ATA artifacts, which real Dell Dimension 3000 systems still happen to have. The Dimension 4600 is the fully equipped version of the 3000, and the Optiplex 170L, which doesn't have an AGP slot, but does at least give us one um, serial ATA connector. Unlike a real computer, this thing hasn't got a floppy drive. I have yet to see a Dell Dimension B110 that does. But since everything seems to be here and accounted for, let's just go ahead and power this thing up and see what it happens to do. Now I am definitely the kind of person who appreciates harmonious relationships between different types of people, and that's why I submit to you my best effort to get almost every Macintosh user on YouTube up in arms. Yes, folks, that is an Apple aluminum keyboard along with a Microsoft wheel mouse optical USB and PS2. So even though this computer has PS2 ports like all real modern computers should have, I don't have any PS2 port peripherals to hand, so I'll just use the USB ones. Go ahead and turn on the uninterruptible power supply over here. We've got power from the monitor. Let's go ahead and power up the computer and just see what happens. Got a green power light, so that's encouraging. Okay, the monitor didn't turn on for some reason. Oh, this, this looks absolutely lovely. Check out what the screen is doing here. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this thing is working great. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, you know that the memory's bad when the system's um, power on self-test actually notices it. <laughs> well, I think there's an upgrade module in this system, so let's just go ahead and turn it off here and see if I can open it one-handed again. This ought to be quite the production. Come on. Something is slightly broken about the side of this machine, though not nearly as bad as a Dell 4600 that I have that almost requires sitting on it and kicking the computer around the block. Let's see, the original memory module is probably the one to the left, so we'll go ahead and pull this one. Yep, this has to be some kind of an upgrade module because it says 512 megabytes. And the existing one is, how big is the existing one? Can we see it with the camera? 256 megabytes DDR. So you know that this was another one of those lovely performance-oriented computers that Dell used to sell back in the day. And it's really unfortunate. It's a black mark on systems that don't deserve to have their reputation sullied because when these things have enough memory, they're decent performers, even if they are basic models. Oh yeah, that, <laughs> that looks quite a bit better. So clearly, it's either dirty contacts on this memory module or it has just plain gone to the bitwise graveyard in the sky where all dead computer parts go. Booting into Windows XP. This is exciting stuff. I feel like I ought to be sportscasting this. <laughs> oh, the things that I get up to late at night, they're, they're never good. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that much. At least all the fans in the system seem to be working or they had the decency to fail silently. Be interesting to see how, uh, how well this thing does at booting up with only 256 megabytes of memory in it. So far it's really not too bad, and even the hard drive seems to be impressively quiet. Go ahead and just go in there for a closer listen. That wasn't the best ever noise I've heard a hard drive make. But I'll bet there's more autofocus motor noise from this camcorder than there is noise from the hard drive itself. So let's see, what have we got here on the desktop? Got some stuff for a Logitech webcam, Panorama Maker 5, iGoons, MicroTorrent. So I'd wager this machine's probably had a virus in its time. Uh, everybody around here in the sticks seems to use Walgreens Photo Studio. Not that I'm saying there's anything wrong with that. HP photo and imaging. There was a desk jet printer set out, an old school, um, one of the first color desk jets that Hewlett Packard ever offered. I don't know if it was the 500C or not, but I do believe that um, it was complete and intact. Unfortunately, when I went back there today, 
I didn't see it. All that stuff had been taken, and I'm really kind of surprised if the trash bin took electronics, because as I said, there's supposed to be a law that prohibits that. Yeah, malware bites, anti-malware, AVS for you, what? What? We have no mouse. That's highly productive. I just love that when Windows XP decides it's not going to pick up on a USB attached input device. That's just one of the ways in which USB peripherals for human input and interfacing with a computer completely irk me. Oh, lovely! So this machine's been on the internet downloading torrents and yet doesn't have antivirus software installed. Yeah, there's probably malware on here somewhere. But first I gotta figure out what to do about these being completely dead and see if I can shake windows around enough to notice, though. We do have the hardware detection icon down there. And the clock is an hour fast. So I'll let this thing go ahead and get its mind together and then I'll take a look at some of the software on it. All right, I'm back after about 20 minutes worth of fiddling around with the software and stuff on this machine. And actually went ahead and terminated most of the non-essential system services and the crud that was running in the background, as well as most of the stuff that was sitting down in the system tray area. But I didn't actually set the system's clock. As you can see, I got the list of running processes down to a downright slender, at least for Windows XP. 18 or thereabouts. A couple of interesting things going on with this machine. First of all, there's a minor issue with the hardware roster. The uh, DVD and CD-ROM drive, that's a CD rewriter and a DVD reader, which is decent, is accounted for and seems to work just fine, at least as far as reading a disc is concerned. Both IDE controllers are right there. But the thing that's missing from this roster of hardware is the hard drive, and I'm not actually sure where it got off to, but it's not there. That suggests to me that maybe at one point this machine had some kind of a virus that maybe tried to wedge itself in there as a root kit and messed up the uh, loading order of filter drivers or something, which is the most common cause for the missing drive on a Windows machine, at least Windows 2000 XP. Internet Explorer has a lot of characterful behavior. More often than not, it will just um, disappear from the screen with, a, with or without a message that says it crashed. And I'm pretty sure that as soon as it gets its mind together, I'll show you what I mean, I'm pretty sure that someone was up to nefarious things on this machine because I noticed that the history... Oh, go away. I don't want to set you up. Um, actually, I do. I want to set you up to fail because you're Internet Explorer and you're a pretty big helping of fail. <laughs> Though that didn't used to be true. But as, as I said, I think someone had been up to nefarious things because they set the history retention completely down to zero. So there's no opportunity for upstanding people like me to be good and nosy and see what was going on. Of course, this computer probably also came from a group where they installed everything they were asked to because here is a lovely professional grade UniBlue registry booster. Now, I know that UniBlue software is usually seen as a pack in with free programs like uh, ImageBurn, I think that's pronounced ImageBurn actually, and things like that, and that smart people will reject it. But, you know, UniBlue could be a perfectly upstanding outfit, although I personally would rather not use their software. But anytime you see anything that uh, proclaims to optimize the Windows registry, stay far, 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 far away. <laughs> Go ahead and close some of these programs here. Definitely some music in iTunes, as you can see. Some decent tunes there. Got a couple of playlists going on over here, things like that. There's a couple of songs on here that were decent and worth listening to. But the most interesting thing of all that I found was what happened when I went into Microsoft Office. Check this out. Everything looks pretty normal. Looks just like it should. But look at what's nestled itself up here between the standard items and font toolbars and the menu bar. This copy of Office is not genuine. Who knows? I'll have some extra lolcats with that, please. Wow, I'm I'm really <laughs> I am really in a sarcastic mood tonight, but all, all smart comments aside, this computer really seems to be running pretty well, and I think the only thing it'll need is for me to dig around in my collection down here and replace this fallen memory module, though I think I'll try cleaning the contacts on this first, 
just to see if that leads to any improvement. There's not anything obviously wrong with it. The only thing I find slightly dubious about it is the statement on the back that says it was assembled in the USA because usually usually any reputable memory maker will put their company name on their parts or at least make it possible to figure out who it is and while this thing that that made the module while this thing definitely has a part number on it I doubt very much that it was assembled here in the US like it says it was so all I'll have to do to really get this thing up and running just fine is to go ahead and wipe the hard drive which is standard operating policy and then I'll go and find some working DDR memory, probably put a gigabyte worth of memory in this thing. I should have some of that kicking around somewhere that I haven't used for anything more interesting and reload some kind of operating system on it. This thing might actually end up taking the place of my um, live streaming music computer, the one that's connected to that flat panel display over there that you can see, because that thing has really been wanting to shuffle off its mortal coil and retire without being stressed any further. It's got little bloated caps on the motherboard. It didn't like the RAM upgrade that I tried to give it, and most recently its onboard audio lost one of its channels worth of output, which necessitated using a sound card to get the machine working. And you'd better believe it did that at the most convenient possible time, just before uh, Weasel 2 HTM and I were getting ready to do a live stream together. I think that was the night that fellow YouTuber and very good friend of mine, Well Don't Do That, was here. But that was almost hilarious. I know that Weasel had a couple computer disasters too. But I digress. It's time to shut this thing down and just see what else I need to be doing tonight. I think I'm probably going to go have something to eat and then I'm going to head off to bed and edit and upload this video, though not necessarily in that order. Oh yeah, there were a couple other things that I forgot to mention. First of all, this system is running Microsoft Windows XP Professional which came as something of a surprise to me. Other anomalous behavior that I noticed from the software, even though the logged on user is an administrator, they are not allowed to change the computer description or to run the network ID wizard, and I just checked to make sure that the machine was not joined to some kind of a domain or anything like that, and it doesn't seem to have been. So I don't know if that's another byproduct of some malware, or if maybe that's one of the group policy object settings that could be changed. I'm guessing that this was probably a kid's computer, judging by the number of educational programs and such on it, and my own two youngest brothers have definitely proven that sometimes children can do very, very interesting things to a computer. They're all so good in uh, at tying knots that people uh, cannot possibly undo, at least mere mortals cannot possibly undo them. And then there's the interesting presence of hyperterminal on the recently used programs list. I really can't imagine that someone was actually using a terminal emulator because that's just not something that most people do with great regularity anymore, especially not in a home environment, but I don't know. I thank you for watching, and I encourage you to leave a comment if you have one. Come on, shut down.